Beta FPV X95, under 250 grams, 6S, 5 inch toothpick. Finally, a 6S freestyle or racing toothpick, five inch under 250 G from Beta FPV. We're gonna review this one today and I'm not gonna go easy on it. We're gonna fly it on 6S full throttle. We're gonna do some crazy freestyle with this quad. It does not have any type of GoPro mount on the top. So this one's you know purely for flying enjoyment or racing. You will absolutely win races if you can learn how to fly this one on any small track multi-GP course or large track because the punch out power to weight ratio on here is probably like 15 to one. I don't even know if that's even a thing, but it is super, super juiced on 6S. But the great thing about this is that it has a decent tune on here. It is super fast and nimble. It will flip and roll on a dime and stop and turn around and go the other way. It is a really fast quad. So um, I wouldn't say it's for the ultimate beginner. It's for somebody who's probably intermediate to advanced if you wanted to start out with this it would be kind of a crazy way to learn because it does have a really nimble feeling on the sticks so um, be ready for that you've never ever flown a quad like this before so even most of you guys that are flying five inch you've never quite experienced something like this x95 it is absolutely a whole different animal than your typical five inch which is in the 400 gram weight range this little guy on the bench, on the scale, by itself is around 143 grams. With a 6S 1050, I'm getting up to about 300 grams. But if you wanna get this guy under 250 grams with a 6S battery, I'll put some links down below for you guys. Those are the GNB 650 milliamp batteries. They'll get it under 250 grams for you if that's what you're looking for. But to get the maximum flight time, I'm gonna suggest around a 1050 battery, and that's gonna get you a really long flight time with this power system on here. We have 35 amp ESCs on here with a burst up to 40 amp. We have a 350 milliwatt VTX with 5.8 right-hand circular polarized antenna coming off the back, supported by the new version three canopy, around 35 degrees of tilt on this camera, and it's a baby retail. So it's really nice night vision camera, or daylight camera it looks great either way so on those dark cloudy days when winter starts to come into play this camera is going to look great even on the overcast days also i've got my xm plus on here with the antennas coming out the very top and i had to put a couple zip ties on this canopy because they seem to no matter how much i crank down these screws they seem to move a little bit on me so one thing to consider with this style frame i'd almost rather have my antennas off the arms like a traditionally mountain with zip ties but this will work for now and we also have a toothpick f4 flight controller as well and we have 1805 1550 kv motors that's right did you hear me right 1550 kv ultra low kv for running 6s on this quad so these little motors are super lightweight they're only a few grams each and they have two bolt pattern on the very top with these gem fan 51, 25, five inch props. They're a really nice, sleek, narrow design and fairly low pitch. Now what's interesting about these props is that while they, they are really light, they feel really aggressive because just a little bit of throttle, this lightweight to power ratio really makes this quad punch. Um, so you have a lot of float with these props. If you wanna try a prop that's gonna be a little bit faster even, with a little bit of less kind of aggressive float feel to it, you can try the two blade props. And the number on these, these are HQs. And these came to me with my extraterrestrial from uh, Racer X. And these are T5, five by three. So they're a little more aggressive on the pitch, but again, a little bit faster prop if that's what you're looking for on a multi-GP course. But either way you go, um, these little quads are rippers. Now this one was a 4S quad. The extraterrestrial was 4S. And just a little bit of frame difference here. You've got sort of crossbar in the front for kind of a, a frontal impact type of frame. This one, it does not have, even though it has more rigid carbon fiber on here, we've got this, um, I believe it was called T800 carbon fiber. It doesn't seem to have a 45 degree pattern on here. So that's one thing to consider there, that the pattern does not look to be 
45 degree. Let's see if I can get that to come in focus for you guys. There we go. You can see it's kind of straight across there. It does not look like it's 45 degree pattern. So um, one thing in this review we're gonna test out is durability and see if this one can take a, a head on punch. So we'll put this out in the field now. Let's do a little bit of flying with it. After that, we'll come back in and I'll give you my final opinion on the X95. Here we go, guys. Let's rip. All right, my friends, let's go ahead and get this flight test started. I knew kind of what to expect here with this quad because I, I've, I'm no stranger to sub 250G ultralight five inch quads. I've had several of them now from different prototypes from around the world to uh, Diatone released one a while back. And you know, a, a couple of the companies have done these and even a couple of years ago. They're, they're not totally new to FTV, so if you're just getting into sort of buying quads, ultralights have been around for a while. New experimentations with motors are happening right now with companies like Beta FTV bringing us out these new motors. And these are just a little lower KV and still very, very strong on 6S, which is great. So now we have that upper end of the throttle that I feel like we've been looking for with an ultralight. Now, some of the first ones, the first generation ultralights I was flying, even on 3S. A 3S 450 to 550 battery, super mid-range KV, and now we're down to low KV and 6S, which really puts me in the sweet spot. So I feel like I have a lot to explore with this quad, and I couldn't do it all in one review, honestly, guys, because I just feel like, again, it's like flying Acro all over again. It's so nimble that I even found myself kind of like overcompensating in certain times, I feel like I was over rotating and it's really extremely fast. When you get low to the ground is where you can really, really see how fast this quad goes. The field that I'm flying in right now is actually a really large field. So this is not really a small field type quad. You could still put it out on the, the multi-GP course, but you want to you want to be on the sticks and probably be intermediate intermediate to expert pilot. So um, that, that's just one suggestion. For the new guys, this wouldn't really be a good first quad. Um, maybe something like your your second or third quad after you've learned how to master acro mode. Um, it's extremely, extremely precise on the sticks. And like I mentioned before, the center of gravity on this quad is just spot on power to weight ratios through the roof. But I feel like, again, I'm flying a smaller quad because when I let off the sticks, it really does float a lot. But man, you can really get in there and rip close to the ground. So I think somebody that had real good gait experience could really be impressive in a race and, and win some multi-GP races. But I love how it will stop on a dime. You can get going full throttle and just whip the yaw around and stop and go the other direction. It's really, really cool. Now back out into some big field flying and this quad will cover a lot of space really fast. And you can do loops and loops and loops and loops and keep doing loops because this quad just, it's so precise in the loops as well. And again, I find myself experimenting and playing around with camera angles with this quad, which is really fun because it's always fun to feel like you can kind of come up with new stuff with certain quads. It has that sort of experimental feel to this quad. There's that yaw snap, really tight yaw snap. Never lost a beat. And I didn't get the flight controller to freak out a single time. It never sort of washed out on me or gave me any kind of vibes or anything. And I've already beat these props up quite a bit. So it's good to see these props are taking a little bit of beating, but the tune is still holding up, which is really good news for you guys. So the flight controller feels solid on here. The toothpick F4 seems to be doing its job on 6S. That's pretty impressive from Beta FPB. So I'm happy with this quad. I think there's a lot of room to grow with this quad. And it's a pretty decent price, but let's go back to the bench now. And let's talk about this quad a little closer up and we'll give some final details and some thoughts and feelings on the X95. Here we go guys, let's do it. All right guys, welcome back from the flight tests. Now some real talk about the X95. 
I was kind of blown away when this quad came in and it was already built. I didn't have to build this up or set it up or do anything to it. All I had to do was bind up my XM Plus receiver that's on here and go out and fly. Now the toothpick F4 for me, it's, it's holding its own on 6S, which is pretty awesome. Um, I feel like it's responsive, it's snappy, it is way quicker than any other five inch quads out there, probably on the planet. Um, guys are gonna be winning races with this one. We talked about the Twig XL on the channel a couple months ago, I believe it was, that reviewed that. It's a little three inch ripper from Beta FPV and Racer X, and uh, we do have some guys in the multi-GP leagues down in Southern California who are, are winning races against five inch with that Twig XL. So. Um, I believe that this one could be up on par with that and be super quick on the course uh, because it just, it has the ultimate response and it's almost like you're gonna have to learn how to fly acro again if you're doing racing with this quad. Now, even with freestyle as well, I found myself kind of like over rotating sometimes in some of my flips and rolls um, because just a little bit of movement on the stick really, I mean, this thing has a very small axis of tilt and um, the CG on this quad is dead center. And so it does really nice, precise rolls and you're gonna have to get used to that. It feels completely different than something like the GEP RC Mark IV or Mark III quads. Even the Nazgul V flies like, kind of like a hog compared to the X Knight. So, I think if you're wanting something that has ultimate precision and control at high throttle, this quad is is doing stuff that, that no other quad out there is doing right now. And, and I think that the components they chose to put on here, the motors themselves, the 1805s are some of my favorites. The original extraterrestrial quad that I had from Racer X here, those are the 1505. 3,600 kVs, and these were the 4S motors. And Beta FPV is just stepping up the game here with 6S and 1805, 1550 kVs. And I'm a 6S guy, so I love 6S flying. And most of the time, these companies will contact me and say, hey, which one do you want, the 4S version or the 6S? And I'm like, send me the 6S, I want full power. And the nice thing about 6S is it gives you a little longer flight time. So it will carry something a little larger than a 1050, but honestly, if you're just cruising around flying, I don't suggest much bigger than um, something like a, a 1300 6S. It's just gonna be a little bit of overkill and it's gonna start to feel heavy. Uh, for the guys who are flying freestyle, my recommended battery is probably gonna be the 650 from GMB. Gives you that ultimate uh, lightweight, power to weight ratio that this quad is made for. So that's the one I'm gonna recommend for that. Longer flight time, I'd say max would be like something like maybe 1050. Uh, I'll try to put some links down below for some 1050 batteries, but I think that the VTX also performed pretty well. 350 milliwatt is actually smoking out there in the field. And on the hotter days, I could probably crank it down to 200 and be totally safe with this setup. But the antenna performed good. It is pretty durable. It did pop out of this little clamp that it's in back here one time on me. It was floating a little bit, so just be careful about that with yours. It could probably really use a zip tie over top of this. So this part right here, put a zip tie around that so yours doesn't pop off like mine did. Um, just one tip for you guys. And as far as durability goes, it held up in my test. I did lose one screw out of the bottom right here. So you wanna double check all of the screws on this quad. Make sure that your metal to metal connections, especially on the bottom of the frame, these four bolts on the bottom that are holding the arms on, make sure, double sure that you have blue Loctite on all those connections there. Um, and even the ones that are going into the bottom of your motors, cause you could possibly lose a few of these. So not the, uh, the prop screws, you don't have to put any Loctite on those, but two bolts on top, same M2 pattern bolts, four on the bottom as well. And what surprised me is that there is no 45 degree angle on the carbon frame. So I think we've got a few things that could still be improved here on the X Knight 5, but uh, you know, that's just me being super critical. Everything else about the quad checked out with me um, for the exception of the antennas. Maybe put those on the side like traditional, just bring those out the bottom and get rid of these because if you don't zip tie these down too, these will kind of fall into the props. So you don't want to cut up your receiver antenna here. Um, you will definitely chew those up on 6S. Now performance wise, we get two thumbs up on performance wise for this quad. Um, and I think the price is pretty decent. So you're getting something that's kind of 
fairly advanced for the price, around $239 with an XM Plus receiver. Uh, I believe it was $229 plug and play. So you could get it without a receiver. And it does support multiple types of receivers all the way up to Crossfire, Spectrum, Futaba, Flysky, all those radios are covered. So any way you wanna go, you can rip with this quad. And it is definitely a two thumbs up quad on the channel. Two thumbs up for Beta FPV for their first 6S toothpick under 250 grams quad. It is super fast, nimble, and a real winner if you decide to do freestyle or racing with this quad. It's absolutely awesome. So check it out in the link down below, guys. Thanks again for subscribing to my channel, and I will bring you more on the bench reviews and out in the field as well. We'll do some more flying coming up. I have a lot of really cool reviews coming up, so stay tuned on the channel. Click subscribe and please do check off the bell for notifications for new videos when they're coming out. I'm Justin Davis, guys. Take care. I'll see you on the next one.